Okay, so Acts 20 verse 32. Um, let me read. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. Okay, so this is Paul who is speaking to the Ephesian church elders, the leaders. He's meeting them for the first time. And he's, and he's saying, you know, I commend you to God, which means I'm, um, I'm, either you can be, you can say I recommend or I present you to God and to the word of his grace. Okay. So it's an important um, thing that he's doing for these uh, leaders that he's saying, I'm commending you to God and to the word of his grace. You know, we must understand that this is the last time he's meeting them. Uh, he has spent about three years in Ephesus, teaching them, you know, uh, equipping them, uh, various things about gifts and everything. Um, and, and this is the last time he's saying them. So he's doing something very important. He's saying, I'm commending you to God, okay? And to the word of his grace, okay? And it does two things. And he's mentioning here, he says, which is able to build you up, right? God and his word is able to build you up, make you strong, build you up and give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified, right? So one of the things that the word of God does, build us up like nothing else can, right? To build us up spiritually, nothing else can do that except the word of God. So he's saying, I'm, I'm presenting you, I'm committing you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And not only that, but really open up your lives and to give you an inheritance among all the saints. If we need to receive anything, it's through the word of God. If we need to receive, uh, or you know, if you need to receive strength, if you need to be built up in the inner man, it's because of his word, right? So he's doing something important. So even as we you know, start this course, let's make that our prayer. Lord, I commit myself to you and I, I make myself available for your word to saturate my life so that I can be built up and I can receive and inheritance among all the saints. Yeah. So why don't we just pray that? Pray this verse over ourselves. Right. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for your word. And yes, Master, we, we make ourselves available. Lord, we present ourselves to you, Lord. And uh, as as people who don't have anything to hide nor can we hide anything from you, Lord. So we present, present ourselves to you as we are, Lord. We make ourselves vulnerable to you, Lord. And we say, Father God, we've got nothing to hide. Yes, Lord. Everything about us, within us, around us, Master, we surrender, we yield. We surrender ourselves to you. To your plan, to your purposes, Lord. To your shaping, to your molding, Lord. To your refining, God, we surrender ourselves to you. And, oh God, we surrender and yield to your word, Lord, to your, the, the spoken word, the quickened word, the logos, the written word. We, we permit ourselves, Lord. And, Lord, may we continue to hear your word, which builds our faith, Lord. And even right now, Lord, I pray that even as we commit ourselves, Lord, to you and to your word, I pray that each one of us will be built up strong in the inner man. That each one of us, oh God, will be opening up our lives to receive that inheritance, Lord, from you, Father God, that you have set um, for us, Father God, even as we set us apart as the saints of God. Thank you. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, I hope you all had a good break, right? I know no break is... Uh, long enough or sufficient enough when you can get back you realize that i wish there were a few more days um, but yeah welcome back online students also a very blessed new year to you and um, yeah so let's get started with this uh, new uh, subject new course that is uh, um, which is financial stewardship okay so it's a it's an interesting course because it deals with an interesting aspect of life which is a necessary aspect of life, which is money, right? Uh, whether we like it or not, each human being on this world needs money, 
right? We can we can say you know I I, I don't need money, but then you know even in ministry we need money. We need money to transact. We need money to maybe hire things. We need money to buy. Um, in it for everything, right? If you look around the Bible College, you realize hey, we need Bible College needs money to function, right? To have students, to have the hostel going, right? To pay the electricity bills, to pay the internet bills, <laughs> so that we can do these classes online. So we see that money is an integral part of our life. So sometimes, based on our experience, uh, life experience, we, you know, we we sometimes have our own perspective of money, saying, "Okay, money is bad, or money is evil," based on the use or abuse of it that we have seen or experienced. Right? Maybe we've seen money being used as a bribe. Maybe we've seen money being used for as a tool of manipulation. We maybe we've seen money, you know, people greedy for money, and so on, right? And then, then we we see that oh, money, it causes only evil. It causes only uh, you know greed, and it causes one to go away from God, right? So, so as believers, as Christians, you know, uh, some of us are going to be in, um, you know ministry in maybe a you know full time kind of a setting or maybe each one of us you know will be doing some form of ministry or the other but but we need to understand and have the right perspective of finances right perspective of money okay so once we do that we would see that you know all the responsibilities that come with it um you know and all the the, the liberty or the freedom you know, that is there that God gives us with regard to money. So we don't have to be weighed down. We don't have to have money have a hold on us. But we can actually use or hold money in the right way. Right? So, so this course is about finances, the right perspective about finances. And also one important aspect, which is stewardship, which means our responsibility, how to responsibly, how to responsibly use money which God puts into our hands. Okay, so this course is about that. And also, uh, so it's a short course. We will have one class uh, or one hour per week every, um, today's Wednesday. So it's one hour per week. It's a short course. Um, but it's a very significant one, right? So, so I just want to ask you, right? So what do you think for a Christian, for a pastor, for a church, for a ministry, what do you think? Is money necessary? I, I just shared my views. What do you think? Is money necessary? Is money a necessary evil? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Online students also. Pastor, money is necessary huh? for our living. Money it, is necessary for our living. Do you think it's necessary evil? No, it's not evil. No. Okay. The greed of money is evil. It's depending on how we use it okay mm. we can't do anything without money yeah right yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. Some support we'll have to give. Financial support. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But then the Bible says, right, money is the root of all evil. <laughs> so you're dealing, you're living dangerous lives, huh? And like carrying this evil thing in our hands and um okay, i'm just looking at some of these uh responses miriam uh, okay sorry uh, esther money is essential okay miriam same thing yeah what could i say though you, you just want to use the mic yeah it's like written like love of money is essential for uh, all evil root cause of all evil mm. so money is definitely a good tool to satisfy our needs, but not our greed. Yeah. 
so yeah so i i wantedly left out that first part <laughs> because uh, that's the thing yeah love of money that's the root of all evil which means that like how a plant is rooted in something and because of that it it blooms it flowers and so on so it's like something that the plant draws so a person if if um, if it has a you know intense craving or love for money then that becomes a root and because of that root there are a lot of things he was going to bear fruit greed selfishness all that is going to come you know yeah okay i just want to place before us one verse okay we will come back to it over and over again okay let's look at um, first timothy chapter 6 okay first timothy chapter 6 and um, we're looking at verse 17 verses 17 and 18 okay um so let's look at okay sanjay uh, money is a resource like any other valuable resource it depends on how we use it for good or for evil yes so true right Okay so 1st Timothy 6 verse 17 says command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty not to trust in uncertain riches but in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy verse 18 let them do good that they be rich in good works ready to give willing to share and so on okay verse 17 command Okay, so it's a command. So Paul is telling Timothy, command those who are rich in this age, this present age, not to be haughty, which means not to be proud, okay, not to be boastful or proud. Then he says, second thing, what does he say? He says, not to trust in uncertain riches. So don't put your trust in it, you know, because money has this power or ability. where you can depend you know you you put your trust in it right if you have money in the bank if you have carrying money some money in the in the wallet right in the pocket you begin to lean or depend on it so he's saying don't trust because money has a quality it is uncertain it can be there and you might have to use it and then it can be gone right it it won't it mean it need not be there so he's saying do not put your trust in uncertain riches then the second part of it but in the living god so he's saying you put your trust in the living god okay now that last part is very important put your trust in the living god who gives us richly all things okay so he's talking about god he's introducing god this aspect of god to these people right to to Timothy and Timothy was in Ephesus again saying this aspect of god this characteristic of god who is he what is he like he is the one who richly gives us all things which means god is a generous god he is a giving god right he's not holding back he's not withholding so he's a god who gives who gives us richly all things what is that to to enjoy Okay, so so we see a God who's generous. To enjoy means okay. How do you describe enjoyment? What are the some of the things that you enjoy? Anything? Huh? Acha khana, good food. You you know maybe you play enjoy playing some sport maybe you enjoy you know some some leisure thing you know maybe you enjoy going on a you know going to the mountains or looking at nature you enjoy it fills you with delight maybe you enjoy listening to music or playing music you enjoy right so God just picture that you know sometimes we read it doesn't get in God He gives saying you, know, you take it say God no 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 you take it. He richly gives us all things for the purpose of enjoying. Okay, see, sometimes we feel guilty, and and sometimes even when we pray, you know, somebody asks us to pray for the food, and we are praying, Lord, thank you for this food, thank you for the people who have made this food. We are about to eat, bless it to our bodies, and then 
Lord, we remember all those who are who don't have food. <laughs> right? See, nothing wrong. Right? I, I also prayed that remember all those. Who, but then you know, it's like you feel guilty. I have this food. Should I eat it or not eat it? <laughs> you know, how much should I eat it? There are others who are who don't have. Don't waste it. But you know, you enjoy it. You enjoy it because God's heart is, hey, I'm giving it to you. You enjoy it. And you look at the other part. Let them do good that they be rich in good works. Meaning, you know, that they have abundance of good works. They're doing good works more and more abundantly. And they are ready to give. This will be the heart posture. Ready to give, willing to share. You know, you see the wholesomeness of it. It's not pulling in one direction. Right? It's it's a wholesome thing. This is God's heart. With regard to money, with regard to material things, God is one who blesses, who richly gives us all things, not just to use it for ministry, missions. These are very important things close to God's heart. But personally, he's looking at you. He knows you by name. He's saying, I'm giving it to you. You enjoy it. You know, you have certain desires. You want to you know, use it on yourself. You want to... What shoes are those? Puma. You want to... You use it. You use it. You don't have to feel guilty about it. Well, you have enough money to buy someone else another puma. Use it. That's what he's saying. You know, willing to share, ready to give, right? So that is God's heart when it's come when it comes to money, when it comes to finance, and it's, it's very important for us to understand that because money, we see the use of it, we see the abuse of it everywhere. Right? And sometimes even in church, saying, money is bad. We've heard messages. And then we, give, we pass around the offering and put money. Let's worship God with our tithes and offerings. And you know, I, I, I remember this one thing happening. Uh, we were in church, and uh, you know, in, a, in a Methodist church. And me and my roommate at that time, we were all bachelors. So uh, ser service was over, and we were just standing and talking. And uh, he said, uh, yeah, we were just talking about work. Both of us were working in different companies. And so he was talking about work. And I was telling him about appraisals and you know, maybe about, about incentives and raise and so on. And then suddenly he said, you know, let's, uh, let's go outside. You know, let's go outside the church building. We were say inside the church building, right? So just go outside and talk about this. You know, in church, why should we talk about money and you know all let's let's go outside and work so and that's you know stood with me for a long time that stayed with me for a long time it's almost as if god and money should be separate ministry and money should be separate you know our lives and money should be it's like we preach something negative about it at the same time at some point in the service we say okay please give generously let's worship god with our tithes and offerings you know there seems to be a, a dichotomy, right? A paradoxical. But the thing is this, that this is God's heart when it comes to money. This is God's heart. He's, he's a generous God. You know, John 3.16, God so loved that he gave. You know, he gave the greatest treasure. He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have it everlasting life. So that's, that's God's heart. So if we change our perspective about God's heart regarding this important subject, money, then it liberates us. And it totally liberates us. Because maybe as a working professional, it liberates us. When you have more money in the bank or you know, in, in your account, it liberates you. Money is not taking a hold on you. Right? You're not feeling guilty because God has exalted you or given you success and you know, there's so much money, you know, you're not feeling guilty about it, right? Because your heart is to be rich in good works, right? to be generous, to be able to give, willing to share, ready to, you know, give and help others as well. Okay, so I just want to place that before us, that uh, even before we uh, get into this whole subject, right? that God is a generous God. Now, our experience in life would have been I don't know, good, bad, ugly. Maybe we didn't have enough money. And that would have shaped us, shaped our thinking. You know? Maybe we had very little while growing up. That would have 
shaped our thinking. So we we are like you know we are tight fisted about money. Right? What if tomorrow I don't have? Right? Yesterday I didn't have. Today I have. What if tomorrow I don't have? So we hold in, hold on. But what if your image of God changes according to what the Word of God says? Where you realize that hey, God is a giving God. God is not holding back, which means there must be something else happening. I need to find out what is that. There is something else right? in my attitude to this whole thing of money and God on finances. Something else that is preventing that is you know that is not really correct. Something else I need to change right? because on God's part, this is His character. This is His nature. Right? Okay, so um, I think the notes are there. Online students have uploaded it. Um, you, you also have the notes. So um, I'll give you a physical copy for, you know, for in person class. Uh, you'll have it this week. Um, but you can follow the notes. I'm going to share the notes here. Okay. So, what is our, okay, it's just coming up. So, what is our attitude towards finances? Okay, now, our attitude or uh, our perspective about something shapes our life, whether you believe it or not. It shapes our life. Okay, if your attitude towards, let's say you have the picture of God as being an angry God, angry God, okay, always angry, always, you know, ready to punish. How will your life be? You tell me. How are you going to approach God? Angry God, ready to punish, ready to, you know, always, uh, you know, looking at, you know, thing and finding out ways to punish you. What will your relationship with God be like? What is your, what will your perspective be God, of God be like? We can share that. Minimal. Is it in? Yeah. So, we, which means that if he's going to be angry, let me avoid. Okay. Minimal interaction, right? And that's what we do in life, right? Somebody is always angry. You know, any maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a boss. We want to keep out of the way, right? You just want to say, okay, if it's absolutely necessary, only if it's required, I will go. Otherwise. I will stay. It's better. I have a lot of distance between myself and that person. So, if that is the picture of God, that shapes my life, right? So, I won't say, you know, I'll enter into his gates with singing, no, <laughs> because I'm thinking, you know, what is he thinking about me? How is he going to punish me? I won't come singing to God. You know, I'm like standing in a corner. Just looking at my life, saying, okay, what is wrong now? I'm in the presence of God. What is wrong? How is he going to reach out? How is he going to punish? That is going to be the fear all the time. So our attitude about anything in life, right? That matters. Okay, so we're going to look at some, you know, how can we have is uh, you know, what are some good attitudes to have about money? And what are some bad? Not so good attitude about money. Okay, the first thing. Okay, what is attitude? Attitude is a way of thinking, a settled way of looking at things. Right. So, a good attitude is that through this money, our biblical attitude is that let God be magnified. Okay, let God be magnified. Let praise be to God because of this finances. Okay, let's look at this verse, Psalm 35 and verse 27. Okay, it says, "Let them shout for joy." And be glad who favor my righteous cause, and let them say continually, Let the God, let, um, let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Okay, so this link between okay, Psalm 35, verse 27. Okay, so this whole link between, okay, God and finances, and the psalmist says, let the Lord be magnified. Look at the reason. Who has pleasure 
in the prosperity of his servants. Okay, so you're not thinking, you know, if you're thinking like, will God be happy if there is increase in my life? Will God be happy if there are finances in my life? Will God be happy? It, takes here, it says here, God is not just happy, but he takes pleasure, right? I'll give you an example. Like uh, when my daughter was small, child was small, and uh, you know, I, I just used to, I just used to sit and just watch her. She's sleeping, not doing anything. She's just sleeping, and she'll wake up. You know, she's, she's tiny. She'll just wake up and look at me, and then say, and then she'll ask like, "What are you doing?" I'm just looking at you. But why are you smiling? No, I'm just smiling. I'm happy looking at you. Right? She's not doing anything. She's not achieving anything. And I'm just taking pleasure. I'm delighting in her. Just because she is my daughter. I'm just looking at her. And you know, just she's just sleeping. I'm looking at her. And that's the heart of the father. So here it says, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his son, in the well-being, the prosperity. Okay, We're going to look at prosperity um, a little later, and we're going to see that prosperity is more than money. Okay, Prosperity is just money is one part of it. Prosperity is more than money. Okay, So first thing, the God may be glorified in all these finances, in all my material blessings and riches and whatever. Let God be magnified because he takes pleasure in my prosperity. Okay. So if, you know, that's, one, that's another thing that we need to take home. You know. God takes pleasure in my prosperity. God gives richly. God takes pleasure in my prosperity. Okay. Now, you might have a lot of questions, you know, but what about... You know, what about this person? What about that person? They are doing all this and then they're getting money. You know, will God still be pleased? We'll address that, right? Whatever. Uh, those kind of questions. Okay, let's look at another verse. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Right? Another important verse. It's saying it is you shall remember the Lord your God. Let God be part of your thinking. Let God be part of your life. In all that you do, you factor in God. You will remember the Lord your God. And it says here, for it is He who gives power. It is He who empowers you. It is He who gives you the ability for what? To get wealth. It is he who gives you the ability to generate wealth, whether it's through business, whether it's through hard work, whether it's through farming, fishing, whatever it is. It is he who gives you the power to get wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God. And it says that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers. Right? Okay, second thing. Okay, firstly, that God may be glorified. Secondly, that there may be enough for the work of God's kingdom. Okay, so that's the right attitude to have about money. Okay, and there's money. Okay, is there enough for the cause of Christ? Is there you know, because the kingdom of God and the or the work of uh, you know uh, work of uh, redemption is something which is close to God's heart, right? Because He sent His Son in order to redeem the world. So, is it close to our heart? Right? So are we, uh, you know, when we look at time, when we look at uh, talents, and when we look at finances or treasures, are we really concerned? Are we passionate that these are used for the work of God's kingdom? Right? So is there enough for the work of God's kingdom in the kingdom of God and the extension of his kingdom? Okay. So that's a good attitude to have about money. Let's look at a couple of verses. Right? Exodus 25. Um, it is actually you know, about while building the tabernacle. Okay? So God gives Moses um, the design for the tabernacle. And he says, okay, this is how. He also gives instruction. Okay, these are the materials that you should use. 
this is how you will build the tabernacle so in in, in such in that instruction we see this 25 verse 1 okay exodus 25 okay let me just go down okay verses 1 to 9 then the lord spoke to moses saying speak to the children of israel that they may bring me an offering from everything uh, from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart you shall take my offering okay so you're saying okay you take the offering from everyone who gives it willingly you shall take my offering willingly with his heart saying wholeheartedly and then he goes on from verse 3 he goes on to talk about what are those things this is for building the tabernacle right so verse 3 this is the offering that you shall take from them gold silver bronze purple and scarlet thread uh, fine linen etc etc it goes on till verse 7 onyx stones precious stones to be set in the ephod and the breastplate and, and then it says here and let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them okay, so say god is saying that i want to dwell among them i want to speak to my people i want to hear them so build me a tabernacle okay and then he's saying you know the way he's god says you know you he's saying you take an offering from everyone who will give it willingly from his heart. Okay? So not forcefully, not in a manipulative manner. If they are willing, you take it. See God's heart again. Right? So we've seen it. We've seen a different side of you know, it in man. And when man does not represent God correctly. Right? God's saying, everyone who gives willingly from his heart, you take the offering. Okay, so that there may be enough in the kingdom of God, enough for God's work. Okay, um, so of course we are in a different dispensation, so we, you know, we, we need to use this differently. So we're not taking it to build the tabernacle, but for the work of God's kingdom, right? Okay, Malachi three, and I think we'll we have enough time for that. Malachi three verses nine to twelve says, God says, "You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation." Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be enough room to receive it. Verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that... He will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Okay. So God has put in some principles. We are going to study that about tithes and offerings and so on. It says, God says, okay, bring all the tithes. It's something that he's established. And he's saying, you know, I will do this for your sakes. I will rebuke the devil, devourer, which is where he comes to steal, kill, destroy, so that your land, everything will be fruitful. And he says, I will pour out for you, will open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing that you may not be able to, you know, even deal with it. Even they won't, you won't have enough room to receive it, right? Okay, so there are a couple of more, and then we'll we'll go into the wrong attitudes uh, about this. Okay, so just go through it, and um, maybe you can meditate on you know First Timothy chapter six verse seventeen. Just go over it, and also Psalm thirty th Psalm thirty five and um, verse twenty seven. Just think about these verses, you now this scripture, and let it really sink into our hearts. Right? Okay. Thank you. God bless. Stop here.